Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform, email me directly, tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. Today, we're discussing a model launched in 2020 to mark 20 years of the F.P. Journe Chronomet à Résonance. Sometimes known as the Res 4, this model, technically still the Chronomet à Résonance, introduces all new engineering and functions, creating new refinements to improve the timekeeping of F.P. Journe's most famous world premiere. So the timepiece measures 42 millimeters in diameter in platinum. There is a 40 millimeter option. This one lets the dial breathe a little bit more. This watch actually looks more natural as the 42. Now it's thin, 10.9 millimeters thick. So while F.P. Journe has upsized the Res, he has not made it fatter, and the timepiece measures 51.7 millimeters from lug tip to lug tip. It still has a 20 millimeter spacing between the lugs. We'll throw the watch on my wrist, which is 16 centimeters in circumference, and you can see much like the 42 millimeter tourbillon, it pushes right out to the edge of my wrist. You can see that best from over the top, though if we do the down the barrel, you can see I don't have a ton of clearance on each side. I'd recommend this watch for a wrist no smaller than 15 centimeters circumference, though you can see it is thin with a domed bezel and it'll slide easily underneath a dress cuff. Taking a quick look at the strap, what we've got here is a strap in large rectangular scale, alligator leather, semi-gloss, all black, monotone stitch, folded edge. You can see gator on both sides, large rectangular on the top, small round scale on the bottom. The idea is that it will last longer than if there were calfskin on the bottom. Jean Rousseau of Paris is the OEM strap supplier to FP Journe. They would have made this. You can see it uses pull tab spring bars. These little tabs here and here allow you to pull the tab, remove the strap without tools, and put it back on. In order to drill the lugs close to the case, Jorn uses a curved spring bar, so that allows the lugs to be drilled close to minimize the pivot distance, which allows it to wear better on a small wrist, but it also has a full range of motion. It's not impeded in its motion by the case. That's because of the curved spring bar that's used. The buckle is simple, platinum, no nonsense, and as you can see, it matches the case. The case is familiar. Dating back to 1999, we have the blended lugs. We have a case all of high polish. We have a mid case defined by the overlap of the case back and the bezel, and then a domed bezel. This is very traditional F.P. Journe design. A major change for the Res 4, or I guess we could call it the 20 year resonance, is that the crown has been relocated from a bullhead winder underneath the strap, which was awkward to wind and to set, to a more conventionally located crown over at two o'clock. It's still a little bit quirky, but then there are two crowns on this watch. Now you wind one barrel for both sides of the movement, and then you use the crown to independently set the two different time zones. We have better symmetry here than on the somewhat reviled Resonance 3 model that came out after 2009. Here we have symmetrical shapes, but one is a half speed, 24 hour dial, and one is a 12 hour dial, so you can use this as a true travel time watch. The timepiece includes a white gold matte dial, so the dial itself is white gold. We have stamped and silver white brass for the inner dials, and then we have a black polished steel bezel framing those two registers. Power reserve indicator, it's 42 hours max, but the watch keeps its remontoir constant force devices active for the first 28 hours of power reserve. So you want to keep the indicator out of that red zone and make sure that the remontoir system, which are constant force devices, there are two operate in parallel. Those are only active for the first 28 hours of power reserve. So please remember to wind this watch at the same time every single day. Now we have some upscale finish compared to the original res. We have this bridge for the differential that feeds out the power from the one mainspring to the two different drivetrains. And you can see this bridge features eight sharp interior angles. The bridge is made of steel, making the black polish and interior finish even that much more impressive than if it were brass. So you can see Jorn, which typically does not create sharp interior angles, gives you eight of them and black polish on the dial side. Now turning the watch over, you can see that the movement is bigger than ever. The movement is known as caliber 1520, so 15 French lean in diameter. It is very large. This is a big 18 karat rose gold movement in a platinum case with a white gold dial. So even though the watch is 42 millimeters, it feels incredibly massive in the hand. As with the original res, it features two separate drivetrains, two separate escapements, and two separate independently regulated free sprung balances. But now we have one big mainspring barrel 
which ensures, along with the differential and the two constant force devices, that the two balances not only maintain their amplitude for 28 hours, and they not only maintain equal amplitude, but they maintain very even absolute amplitude. So they're the same and they're constant. The same on the original resonance entailed declining amplitude of about 50 degrees lost over 24 hours, but the amplitude would be even from balance to balance. Here, the amplitude remains even, but there's no loss of amplitude over those 24 hours. So they are both equal and constant. Now, taking a quick look at the structure, you can see that there's a remontoir. It's a titanium linear spring that meets out one second of energy every second from the barrel to the escapement. So for the first 28 hours, the barrel doesn't actually drive the balances. Now, the resonance phenomenon, which Jorn pioneered in wristwatches, couples the two sides together so that they beat in opposition and they have a lot more resistance to shock, concussion, or gravitationally induced timing deviation when they're coupled by resonance than if they were simply two balances in one case operating together. You can see there's a little rack and pinion at center with black polished rack and then there's a rose gold pinion screw that's used to adjust the distance between them. They still beat at 21,600 vibrations per hour. They're still free sprung for durability. They still have physically massive balances by the standards of wristwatches. And again, they are still adjusted in six positions. Now, because resonance takes about seven to 10 minutes to couple the two sides together, the seconds hands aren't always going to be in sync. So they give you a flyback mechanism right here that you can use, and I'll do this now, to synchronize those two seconds displays. And then they shouldn't vary by more than five seconds apart from each other over every 24 hour span. And you can always reset the two of them just like that. It's a wonderful piece of horological theater. Now this is 30 meters water resistant, so please don't take it swimming, but it represents the most effective yet implementation of F.P. Jorn's resonance wristwatch as you have the remontoir constant force device from his landmark Tourbillon remontoir and the resonance chronometer phenomenon introduced one year after the original Tourbillon in 2000. This is the watch that combines both of F.P. Jorn's signature accomplishments. Reach out to tmasso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.